welcome to a look at the top 10 base building strategy and simulation games of 2017 and 2018. At number 10, Osiris New Dawn. Now with these top 10 videos, I like to keep the top 10 slot as kind of a wild card slot. And I like to throw in something that's either a slightly different or a little bit off the wall, or that's really big, bold and ambitious. And this game fits into the latter category. This is an ambitious game. And while base building is one of the central themes of the game, there is so, so much more. The year is 2078 and the Earth's resources have been depleted and mankind has gone off with the Osiris expedition in search of another planet to screw up. You're just getting comfortable on your nice shiny space station, studying potentially really nice habitable planets to land on when your space station malfunctions, forcing you into an emergency landing on the hostile, nasty, horrible planet immediately below. After crash landing on the surface of Proteus 2, your first job is going to be to explore your surroundings and gather resources and materials. Now you can start building your base. You start off with a central habitat, and then you can expand the structures by adding modular units. You can grow food, you can build living quarters, manufacturing labs, and you can also build and upgrade your equipment and carry out research which will allow you to build rovers, hovercrafts, and even spacecrafts, which will allow you to explore the surrounding planets and moons. Now, I said this was an ambitious game, and it's not just the scale of the game that's ambitious. They've taken the open world, build, craft, survive genre, and they've mixed in some RPG mechanics. You can choose to play different classes, you can choose different skills, different attributes. You can play online or offline. You can play single player or multiplayer. You can play in a private universe or in a public universe. And the best for me, you can play in first person or you can play in third person. All sounds great, doesn't it? But before you rush off and buy into the early access on Steam, just be aware that whilst the early access went well at first, recent patches have made the game a bit of a grind and also really difficult, especially in the early game to the point where it's taken some of the fun out of it. Now, this is still very early access. All of this may change, and the game may get back to what it was. So, add it to your watch list. This is our colony. Our home. I never thought we'd come this far. But this is not how it started. When the demons came, humanity was not prepared. I'm one of the lucky ones. I'm one of the survivors. The apocalypse had begun, but we chose to resist, to rebuild in the shadow of chaos. We started with a small camp, collecting what little we could. We explored a devastated world anew. We had a scavenge, and fight for resources. We relearned forgotten trades, crafted tools, we constructed buildings, built a new economy, forged a new society. Where science failed us, we turned to the occult, performing rituals to harness the power of the dark arts for our own ends. Each day we survived was a triumph. Every death, another tragedy. The gates of hell have been unleashed, but judgment has not yet been passed on us. To survive is to prevail. Will you survive Judgment Day? Judgment, available now on Steam. Number eight, it's Planet Nomads. Now this game has huge potential. It's currently in early access and the reviews are mixed and the negative reviews seem to fall into two categories. Either it's complaints about the lack of end game, well, the game's in early access, it's not finished yet, or complaints about bugs and glitches. 
Yeah, it's in early access. It's not finished yet. But what everybody seems to agree on, even the negative reviews, is that the game is beautiful. And not just beautiful to look at, but the music is great. It's very atmospheric, gets you really immersed in the game. And when you combine that with the building, the building features of the game are very, very good. Uh, you can build some awesome structures. You can build some incredible vehicles. You can even build things like monorails. So I would say this is a game you should definitely have on your watch list. Keep a close eye on it, because this could turn out to be really good. It's due for full release sometime in 2018. What do you get if you take a Victorian steampunk theme, throw in a big dollop of colony management, add some genuinely engaging gameplay, render the whole thing in stunning 4K graphics, And finally, load it up with more zombies than you can possibly imagine. You get, they are billions. And this isn't some mindless tower defense game. This has got colony management, it's got resource gathering, you've got to build all kinds of buildings, you can upgrade them all. And the zombies are intelligent. They smell, they listen. If you make a noise, they'll come to it. If you kill some of them to access a resource deposit, a hundred of them will come to investigate. But I don't have to tell you about all that. Just look at it! Number six, it's Maya. Now to say the jury's out on this game is an understatement and let me explain why. The surface of the planet is full of hostile animals, which forces you to build mainly underground to ensure the survival of your colonists. Maya was inspired by games like Dungeon Keeper and Dwarf Fortress. And just like those games, the mechanics of the game are extremely deep and complex. The game has been developed by a very small team with only one coder and that coder is Simon Roth who used to be with uh, Mode 7 who developed games like Frozen Synapse. The procedurally generated maps are huge being two kilometers wide, long and deep. And generally speaking, the systems and mechanics in the game are really good. The fluid dynamics of things like lava and water are particularly impressive. So what's the problem then? Well, this game's been in early access since December 2013. Yeah, it's been in it's been in early access for three and a half years. And apparently, according to the developer, they put it into early access too early, like about six months too early. And that has delayed the game, they estimate, by something like 18 months. So this game should have been out 18 months ago. And the game has been plagued by uh, performance issues and bugs. Now that doesn't sound very encouraging, but you've got to remember that the developers haven't abandoned this. They've stuck this out and they've stuck with it for the last three and a half years. And they have been fixing the bugs and they have been improving the game and optimizing and doing all of those things. The question is, in the next few months before release, can the developers finish the polishing? If they can, this is gonna be a really good game. But if they can't, then it could be a real disaster. So this one, should it be on your watch list? Definitely. But buyer beware, make sure that the game's been polished before you buy this.
At number five, it's Evil Genius 2. Now, I wish that this was a trailer for Evil Genius 2. It's not, it's a trailer for Evil Genius Online. And that's because it's only literally just been announced a couple of days ago that they're gonna, they're gonna do a sequel. And I'm sure that's gonna make a lot of people happy because it was a very popular game. Although, I mean, it was criticized at the time for having too much micromanagement and it was a little bit buggy. But I've gotta say, I hold out huge hope for this game. Because Rebellion, the developers, they develop it themselves, they publish it themselves, they don't have anybody telling them what to do. So as long as they learn the lessons from the first game and keep the humour that made the first game so good, this could be something very, very special. So this is one to add to your watch list, your Christmas list, your wish list, every list you can think of. Because it's going to be awesome. Please, please be awesome. There can't be many of you out there who don't know about Factorio. But for the very few who don't, Factorio is a game in which you build and maintain factories. You mine resources, you research technologies, you build your infrastructure, you automate your production, and you use it all to kill the local indigenous life forms. And it's really difficult to find anything negative to say about this game. It basically is the best logistical management simulator ever. You can play single player, you can play cooperative multiplayer. It has great modding support and a big modding community. There's a lot of great mods out there. And it comes with a built-in map editor. And it only costs £15, which I find staggering. So, it's this simple. If you don't have it, buy it. But don't blame me when you get fired from work because you keep turning up late because you've been up all night saying, just just five minutes longer. I, I just want to do this. I, just five minutes longer. I just want to optimize that. Yeah, it's extremely addictive and you will lose a lot of sleep. You've been warned. Oh yeah, and it's even got an awesome trailer. The goal, or should I say, the dream. is to build a colony. A self-sufficient new world, far away from Earth. We know it's not going to be easy, but achieving dreams never is. In such an unforgiving environment, challenges will be many. But if humanity is to survive, we need to succeed. This is why only the best and most talented people have been selected for this mission. Isn't there a picture how it's gonna look when it's finished? No. Mm, maybe there's one on the box. Hmm. I don't think there is a box. Now, this is going to surprise some people. Oxygen Not Included is at number two. And I bet a lot of you thought this was going to be the number one. And I tell you what, I agonized about it. 
I have played so much Oxygen Not Included, it's not true. I've already done three Let's Play series. The game is a space colony simulation game. Uh, you manage your colonists, you dig, you build and maintain a subterranean asteroid base. And you need to look after them. You need to supply all of their needs, uh, water, warmth, food, oxygen. But that's just to keep them alive. Keeping them happy is a whole other ball game. The game is awesome. It is truly awesome and I could easily have made this my number one pick. The only reason I didn't is because we haven't really seen an end game to this game yet. And without an end game, as much fun as it is and as much replayability as there is, it's not the complete package. But the game is still very early in early access and every update that comes out, it just gets better. So this one I can recommend wholeheartedly buy it, you won't regret it. And at number one, yeah, it had to be RimWorld. Now not only is this my number one pick for upcoming base builder, but this is actually my number one favorite of all time. I've got over 560 hours played and three Let's Play series to my name. Now for anybody that doesn't know, RimWorld is a sci-fi colony sim driven by an intelligent AI storyteller. Now that's according to the developer, Tynan Sylvester. Personally, I think it's driven by an infuriating, sadistic lunatic of a storyteller. But that's the thing about RimWorld. It's challenging, it's sometimes infuriating, it's rewarding, and it's tons of fun, often all at the same time. You have to manage your colonist moods, their needs. You have to give them medical care. You engage in small team tactical gunplay. You build structures, weapons, clothing from metal, wood, stone, or futuristic materials. You fight pirate raiders, hostile tribes, rampaging animals, giant tunneling insects, and ancient killing machines. You can tame and train cute pets, productive farm animals, deadly attack beasts, and your colonists have complex relationships with family members, lovers, spouses. You can build colonies in the desert, the jungle, tundra, forests, outdoor compounds, underground bases. What else can I say? This game is a huge bowl of awesome sauce with a massive side order of cool beans. And it's yet another game, like Dwarf Fortress, like Prison Architect, that proves that you don't need fancy graphics to be a great game, you just need good, intelligent, engaging, challenging gameplay. And that's it for my top 10 base building games. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you for the next one. Peace out.